we're finally getting lathe tooling figured out. Super excited. <music> 1018 steel, a job came in, we tried it real quick in the lathe and we didn't really focus on a good feeds and speeds and we were using an import tool and it looked like this and I was just, I had had it. This is awesome though. Can a metal tool, I'll talk about that in a minute, with good feeds and speeds. We'll come back to that again in the Fusion 360 here. Let's first, we got some cameras set up, let's take a look at some turning. Awesome. Take a look at the first part and the part we just cut. That is a world of difference, folks, and that is awesome. It was more than just feeds and speeds. It was also some of our cam strategies. So let's hop into Fusion and, and take a look at that. But first, I do want to give a shout out to Greg at Kenna Metal. Uh, he sent us over some of these inserts. For those of you that have been following along on, for us on social media, we've been a little frustrated because we actually, also honestly with Kenna Metal, not Greg, but we tried to order a tool and I can't tell you how disinterested they were in our business, both direct and then we called a distributor here in Ohio and uh, just disinterested. I really mean that, I don't want to rant, but um, if anyone, folks from you know companies like Kenna Metal are listening, darn it, um, there's a lot of us that are up and coming in this industry that aren't 30 year old tool and die guys. I'm not asking for credit, uh, I'm willing to pay cash or credit card at the time of purchase, um, but we, we, we want some service. Um, Iskar as well, really frustrating. That was actually the service rep. Uh, I told him I wanted to buy two tools, never followed up with me. Sandvik came in yesterday and they were great. And Seiko came in today, awesome. Um, and Greg from Kenna Metal has sent us some stuff too. And the results as you saw today, awesome. Let's take a look at those inserts and the uh, take a look at the chips as well. So as honest, as awesome of an improvement as that was, I know we can do even better because we're breaking the chip, but we're not breaking it as short as we could. And I'm okay with that because I've, we've got some limitations on this machine, which we're also learning to, to overcome or, or deal with better. Um, so this is an improvement. You saw it didn't bird's nest and we were running this all morning and it didn't bird's nest. So it's a huge improvement, but again, let's do better and get short little chips, you know, like this guy that are just popping right off the machine. Um, the inserts, I gotta say, you know, having used the lower quality, you know, import, you know, Shars type inserts before like this, um, when you pick up one of these Kenna metals, they honestly look beautiful. Like it's, it's, it's kind of stunning when you look at one and you just, it just, it just looks quality. It's really exciting. I was honestly like I was nervous because I didn't want to destroy the first one that I put in the machine. So the big thing that we did aside from some of the cam strategy stuff, was we use smaller tool radiuses. And that comes back to how do you activate the chip breaker and how deep do you have to run it? We normally use this guy, which is a 432. And you can, there's a link in the video description to a, a really good carbide identification chart. But that number 432, the last one, the two, is the radius of the tip of that tool. And you have to push the tool in at least half the depth of the radius to activate the chip breaker. You also have to be moving along your cut, you know, 
this way, the inch per rev at a certain rate so that you're sort of pushing the tool into the insert hard enough to come over that little ridge there again to activate the chip breaker. A lot of similarities to the series we did on carbide tooling, which was basically for the mill, but basically if you run this tool too shallow or too slow, it's gonna rub and that's, that's a terrible tool. The, di the difference I find is usually rubbing with milling, you actually get a good cut at first, whereas rubbing with lathe is just, just terrible. So again, thanks to Greg from Kenametal uh, for sending over these inserts. Some of them are the 432s here, which I'm not as uh, optimistic about. Um, 431s though seem to be awesome. The other thing is that Tormach is I think just going to release some 431 stuff. So it'll be lower cost, uh, but we're gonna put some of that to work and see how it, how it goes. So this tool was a CNMG 431P KCU 10 uh, 405 0681. Uh, that 405-0681 is the, I think the metal part number. Greg, Greg had recommended using 625 service feet per minute. A He had said 35 thou depth of cut, but I ended up going uh, bigger and I didn't know whether that was a radial or, or uh, diameter depth of cut and three inches per three thou per rev. So here was the speeds and feeds that I ended up doing. And again, this is 1018, which it's not hard to turn, but I've found that it's a little bit harder to get a good finish on, which is why I'm so happy about this. So we did 600 surface feet per minute, capping it at 2,500. If we pull open the Excel file that we, have, we made in our speeds and feeds YouTube series, and we take a look at this first guy here, if I plug in 650 surface feet per minute, I can play with the tool diameter, in this case, the same as the work part diameter, and I can see, um, okay, at 0 0.5, 0 0.75, you know, really, my lathe is only gonna cut at 650 surface feet per minute at one inch. As soon as I start going smaller, three quarters of an inch, say, to cut at 650 surface feet per minute, I have to have 3,300 RPMs and right now I only have it up to 2,500 on that machine. So in short, when we're back down to the 375 final diameter, we're only going 290, not even 250, like 250 service feet per minute, which is funny because I wish I could go higher, but that's also one of the things I talked about in that carbide series is service feet per minute, it matters, but it's not the most important. What is important right here is two things. It's this feed per rev, which we settled at 5,000 per rev, and the depth of cut. And here's the single biggest thing that I did. Aside from going a little bit deeper, we did a 50,000 uh, depth of cut here, is I turned off finishing passes. You know, on the mill, I am so hardwired to doing a really light 5,000 or 10,000 cleanup pass to get a really good finish. You minimize deflection in your tool holder or your tool itself. But on the lathe, two things. One, you're not gonna cut deep enough to activate the chip breaker. Some exceptions if you've got some really narrow, uh, small radius tools that had a finisher um, edge breaker brought, uh, built into them. But the other thing is that you're gonna rub because you're not taking a deep enough depth of cut to even get over, you know, there's a tiny little ridge around those tools and you've got to cut into that or else you're going to rub which i think honestly is why i got such a crummy surface uh using the import tool it wasn't just because it's that bad of a tool it's because i still had this finishing passes turned on so you kind of got to go for it and, and the, what made me think of this was i asked adam booth last week when he was right here for the open house i said hey adam when you're trying to maintain you know chip breaking and you've got to you know go for your final diameter do you sneak up on it? And he's kind of like, no, you know, if I, if it's a, if I got to be taking 30, 40 thou depths of cut, you get to where you've got that much left, you know, measure it, test out, make sure you're to go and then dial it in and off you go. And I want to say I had the confidence to do that, but I obviously didn't because that's not how I was doing it. I was trying to be uh, a wimp and just skim those last little cuts down. So super excited with those results. Uh, I'm excited to try more. We've got some tools coming in, again, from Tormach, I think from Seco and Sandvik. So we'll see what we get. Uh, I wanna, you know, I wanna push that machine as hard as we can and get good parts, make great parts coming off of it. So hope you guys enjoyed that. 
Uh, if you do, we appreciate you guys commenting below, subscribing to the channel, um, supporting our page on Patreon. That means a lot to us and helps put these videos out. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.